what's up everybody hey so today uh i decided i'm going to start installing my lift it is a max jack low rise lift this is the top of the post it's like it's a two post car lift but it's made for short ceilings so i just need to get the car off the cars off the ground just so i can change the brakes on them so you're talking two three four inches so it doesn't have to be anything uh yeah, like I have a pit, so if I'm doing anything underneath it, I'll just walk underneath the pit. So I really don't need the cars way up in the air for oil changes and stuff like that. So the last couple of days I've been kind of messing, it's been raining, so I've been out here in the garage, the three car garage, trying to clean up and go through some of my totes and get rid of some garbage. So I have my, this is what I call bay three, my all my projects over there, my uh, concrete buggies, two or three of them. Three, three concrete buggies, one tracked wheelbarrow, two snow blowers, uh, a shop vac or two, and then over on this side, oh, and my sand blaster, my little bead blaster. I got my old door some F three hundred and fifty, which I'm gonna be uh, selling, and I got my welders, my cutting torch, and a couple more pressure washers that I gotta fix, like my heated pressure washer. I gotta put a new pump on. So I've been kind of cleaning it up organizing everything, put all my, finally put all my tools away, hung them all up on the wall. Let me see if I can swing around here and show you. So there's all my tools. That's how they're supposed to be kept, not thrown all over the floor. They're supposed to be all in their proper lo uh, locations, labeled. So today though, we're gonna install, we're gonna attempt to install the Max Jet. Right there, or uh, the Max Jack. Max Jacks, I guess it's called. <laughs> so anyways, uh, let's get that started. I got, uh, I already did half of the layout. I'll put you on a tripod. I already did half the layout, trying different dimensions and stuff like that, the distance apart. So it looks like from the back side of the frame, the back of the mounting plate, you'll see, I'm gonna do 67 and a half inches from the center. So times that by two, I think it's like 135 inches on the outside that's the farthest to spread them apart according to the installation instructions i did pick them up used uh do not i haven't even tried them but they are portable so basically you drill the holes you mount it there and then if you want to move it to another location and you have other holes drilled elsewhere in the garage like if i want to put it in the big bay over there the longer bay i can have a separate set of holes over there i can just unbolt it the, all the hydraulic hoses are quick disconnect it's 110 unplug it, disconnect all the hoses, run the lifts over there, bolt them in the ground, and then I have them over there. So I think the middle bay is gonna be the best. It's basically just for brakes on cars, so I can jack all four up at the same time or rotate the tires at the same time, make it a lot easier. So, uh, well, let's get this started. I'll put you back up in a tripod and uh, I'll show you some of the stuff that I've already done, some of the layout on the ground with chalk lines. So I got you on a wide angle here right now, just so I can kind of show you. So the instructions said 105 inches apart, which is that line, to no more than 130, 135 inches, no, 135 inches apart, which is that outside line. And that's to the back mounting plate, which is right there. So what I did was I got the left side squared off and the center of the lift is nine feet in from the door. So I have enough room in the front, and if I need to, I can move the totes in the toolbox if I if my car is a little bit too long to get it centered. So I just got to mirror these lines over to this side, and what it says to do is to take a framing square or a sheetrock square, which that is right there, put it on a mounting plate, shoot it across, and take a chalk line and pop it across, and that's where you mount that one. So I will take my time. I'm going to make sure these are definitely squared, squared as best I can across from each other. And uh, so once you drill the holes, it's pretty much one and done. So let's see if we can uh, do this without ruining the concrete floor. I got five holes, five one-inch holes in each side to drill. And they got to be right in there. So, all right, let's get this done. So I pretty much got this one where I want it. Close nine feet in from the door from the sheetrock wall to the center of the pier it's, the back of the mounting plate is on a blue line so now i got to mirror that one on this side
matter of marking the five holes, drilling them with a one inch corbett, corbett and then taking the Hilti uh, HDI uh, concrete fasteners, three quarter inch thread and hammer them down. Only problem is the drill bit does not fit through those holes. So I can't really do that. So I think I'm going to try to make a template for the bottom of those. Unless I have a smaller drill bit downstairs that I can use. So to begin with, I'm going to trace it. Just so I have it marked. I'm using soapstone to mark the concrete. So that one's marked. More to this one. Trace this one. I'm trying that microphone again. So I'm hoping you can hear me better. So what I came up with is basically the same ideas as, as I use for pool patios when I drill those uh, safety cover grommets into the concrete pavers or concrete pool. So I drilled an inch and a sixteenth hole in the plywood. I did three of them in case one wears out, but I shouldn't. I have a one inch diamond core bit in my half inch drive drill. I'm only using this drill because I'm too lazy to go get my heavy duty one. I have it marked to the depth that I need to drill for the concrete anchors, which is according to the uh, Hilti. And it's right on the box, tells you what size drill bit, tells you how deep to drill it. So I got it marked. And the point of the plywood is I'm gonna stand on it. You'll see when I, I'll bring you in closer when I actually go to do it. I'm gonna stand on it. And then that holds my drill bit centered Kind of like this, so I stand on it. And then do that. And that will hold it, I don't wanna do it because I wanna mark the concrete there, but that'll hold it, the core bit from walking across the floor. Unlike a normal drill bit, there's a point on it. Well, this, these don't have points on it, they're hollow. So you can take that core out. So I got three holes, all the same size. Uh, so the next step is, so, I'll ruin it. so the next step is going to be to mark the holes in the base plate and all I'm gonna do with that is take a can of spray paint and I'm going to uh, shoot it down in there and I'm gonna stay away from it if you shoot too close to it it shoots underneath so you kind of got to let it come up from about uh, 18 inches up and just shoot down in there and that should outline each hole there's five holes on this one five holes on this one so let me get the spray paint and then we'll take like a five minute break after I spray it. We'll take like a five, 10 minute break, let the paint really dry and then I can move the posts out of the way and we'll see if that works. Let me grab some spray paint. So let's move these and see.
my camera ended up shutting off for some reason. But as you can see, I started all five holes on this side just to get a idea. Works good, perfect, right where the markings are. So now I have to drill down to the tape on each one. So I'm gonna put you back in the tripod and we will continue drilling these down. I'm gonna have my vacuum. So I'm just gonna uh, more than likely put this on time-lapse, but I'll just keep it nice and zoomed in there. And of course I have my helper out here. She goes wherever I go. She's not afraid of anything as long as I'm there. So she, she may walk around in the video, we'll see.
my third shirt, third shirt in this project. I've had the doors closed because my cats were out here. Even during all that drilling and vacuuming, my little girl was sleeping over on her burlap sack over there, the burlap blanket. So now I got her inside. I'm going to open it up. It's not any better outside, but I'm hoping to get some kind of breeze in here. I got all 10 holes drilled. There we go. Try to get some breeze in here. Um, so the next thing, I already cleaned out the holes, all 10 of them. I vacuumed them out really good and they're all pretty much to the right depth. So now it's just a matter of figure out how to work these. So let me read the instructions on these one more time. I think I pretty much know how they go. And then uh, we'll start putting some of these anchors in. So the way these work is you basically hit them down in the hole. Take a sacrificial bolt and you hit them down, you push them down in the hole. Try to get them all the way down. Then once you get them down, you take this out. And if you look inside, there's that red. That red is a slug basically right there. And you take a metal rod and you hit it. And then this flares out just like one of those sheetrock wings, plastic wings, but heavier duty. And then when you tighten a bolt up even tighter, it should spray, span that out when you put your bolts in there. So let's see if we can get this in here. If I can't get it in there, we're, we're pretty much in trouble. And I drilled this hole definitely on an angle. Let's see. I want to get it all the way down in there until the bottom's out. That's good. That's flush. That's one. See, the slug is right there. So then what we'll do is we uh, I'll hit that and that sets it basically like right here. Yep. And that locks that in per permanently. That will never come out now. So let's get this in here. All right, that one's just deep enough. And hit that slug down in there. Oh, hope these are deep enough. This one's going to be close. It tells you don't over drill it, but I think you should really kind of get an extra quarter inch on it. But I didn't. bottomed out I want these deep that one's definitely not going to be deep enough this one barely deep enough I'm gonna redrill this one. You know what? Let me get the drill. I'm gonna redrill those last two.
They actually look really good. <laughs> oh, let's see. I got some two inch grade A bolts with a washer. And they said, do not use an impact gun. They said, only do a ratchet um, to 90. So I'm just gonna get these touching for now. I'm not gonna torque them yet. I'm just gonna get them so they're snug. And then when I get the other side in, I'll get the torque wrench out. So that is the first one. I did not torque it down, but that's the first one. All five went in really good. There, I put them all in by hand, three quarters of the way down. So I just gotta tighten those up to 90, uh, 90 uh, pounds per inch, according to the Hilti directions for those bolts. So let's go over on the other side and put that one together. So one thing I'm gonna do right off the bat is I'm gonna make sure all these holes are deep enough. So this has to get all the way flush. So let's double check. I'm just gonna mark it with that, put my finger there. See, nope, that one's not deep enough. That one's like an eighth inch short. That one's deep enough. All right, I'm going to hit all these. I'm going to take all these down about an eighth of an inch. I'd rather have a little bit extra so I know they sit flat. I already got the drill out and the vacuum out, so start on this one. to the other side I want to see if I have to shim that one like I did this one put some washers here it says to shim it if needed so let's go to the other side
Okay, so obviously I gotta move some. I'm gonna have to move that main toolbox. That's fine. This is just to see if this is gonna work. Like I said, I bought this a year and a half ago, never installed it. So it's been sitting in my garage. Now it's installed the way it was supposed to be. According to the manufacturer instructions, according to the way the guy had it installed at his house. So let's see if it works. Worst thing that's gonna happen is gonna trip my garage breaker because that outlet over there is really weak. So I might have to run a heavy duty extension cord over to the individual breaker over there, but let's see. on both of them it's not hitting the ceiling I'll never have a car this high like I said I have a pit so if I gotta do anything underneath I'm gonna use the pit it's a lot safer this is more for the tires and the brakes huh. all right let's see if it goes down I'm gonna consider this one a success. Three shirts. Three shirts, one job, one day. Hey. Alright, so the only thing left to do is I gotta move some toolboxes. I'm gonna move this stuff that's in this corner. I'll put this stuff all against the wall in bay three. Um, eventually I'm gonna be getting rid of a lot of this stuff. It's uh, a lot of it is uh, repair work, and uh, then I'm going to sell it, get rid of it, give it away. So, nice. I got an engine. I got a car lift. Finally. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.